Yeah, although this is something I just put together. It's actually out of uh, scrap wood. It's kind of odds and ends of ash boards that I had cut for a different project. This is the leftover stuff. And they actually came from logs that were originally cut for firewood, the ones that were piled up back here. You know, I cut uh, the best of them up for lumber. But these were extra, like I say, left over. And I was going to move them, and I said, well, you know what I could really use? You know, I built that platform that I use it for the wash machine, which is a handy thing. So I thought, well, I'll build another one, you know, just a basic box kind of thing, but it's it's of the size where it's portable enough that I can get the three-point, the bail forks under it, move it to wherever I want it, block it up to the level, and use it for anything I want to use it for. Uh, what I'm going to do now is set up my old loom on it after it dries a little bit. I just got done pine tarring it. But also, uh, I'm thinking, you know, when I really get into the canning, like doing the tomatoes, well, it would be handy to have something like this, you know, a flat surface that you can work on that I can put the, the camp chef stove on here and put a table on here, you know, and then work on that. Not in this location, but I can move it to wherever I need it. But first I'm going to set that old loom up here and do some weaving on it. But that's what that is. But it's about the first time I've done uh, kind of normal type construction where it's dimensional lumber, though it's, you know, it's like lumber that I made. And it's actually held together with nails. I don't often do that. But it cost me nothing really, because like the nails, or out of that bucket of nails I bought at the rummage sale, you know, for very little money. But I happen to think, if I can find, you know, they keep changing YouTube and it gets to be more of a mystery to me all the time, but there were some comments that came in. And we'll see if I can actually <laughs> figure out where the comments are. <laughs> well, they aren't there. I can remember them if I have to, but yeah, okay, that must be the yeah. Okay, somebody asked about uh, an elite classic loader. Now I don't normally do the gun stuff on this channel, and we're going to be doing that on the other one. But when you use a classic loader, you know, the new ones now, it all has a caution in them about uh, using, you know, not using mean lever guns. Uh, that has to do with the crimping, but you can crimp them just fine if you use the, the cast bullets. I do it all the time. Because uh, the cast bullets have got a, a crimping groove molded into them. So I don't worry about that. Um, if you're using jacketed bullets, well, then it's a little more difficult. Uh, that's why I, I don't, you know, like say, the, the lead loader just crimps the neck, or it, you know, it just sizes the neck, so the, bullet, the cartridges have to go back in the gun they originally shot in. That's the first thing, because they form fit to that chamber. Then when you resize them in a lead loader, it only sizes the neck. So when you put a bullet in there, it, like say in a Mosin, I know a lot of times people are trying to use 308 bullets. Well, you aren't going to get a, a good crimp with a 308 bullet. You know, it's just too small a bullet, the size or, or the, the crimping. You know, you flip that tube over to do the crimping, it just won't crimp them. You know, the bullet is going to fall inside or fall out or, you know. so. Look at your bullet, make sure it's got not the little, you know, if you've got the jacketed bullets, they have that little knurled portion, that ain't going to hold. 
or it's tough to make them hold. It can be done, but it takes a lot of pounding. But if you use jack or cast bullets, they have a defined crimping groove, and the lead loader will just crimp that in there nice as could be, you know. So that's not really a problem. Uh, let's see. Oh, somebody was asking about saw horses. Have I ever made saw horses? Well, you know, I've got a couple of saw horses, but I don't often use them. You know, I, I've showed the one time, like when I'm working on logs, where I'll take a, a fork, you know, a fairly good sized branch and then put cross piece in it and, and then use that for a saw horse for working on logs. But what I did instead of using saw horses, I have that bench. Uh, if you look in the, the red bench video, it's in the background because that's portable again, much like this thing is where I can get under with the bail forks and move it to where I need it and use it. And that one is made low so that it's comfortable to saw with, you know, and that's got all the bench dogs and stuff for it. So that's just a lot easier than, you know, regular saw horses. Like say, if you have the ones that are made out of those brackets you can buy, oh, they're horribly flimsy. And I'm usually working on big, heavy things, you know, uh, big beams and stuff, and they can't support it. Well, now that, that low bench that works like a sawhorse is just much more reliable. Uh, otherwise, I tend to use, you know, if you get a piece of wood about this big around, about that tall, great sawhorse. You know, just don't have to log. That's what I use all the time. Now, let's see. Oh, okay, here, somebody was asking about union loom. They just bought a union loom. They're going to be picking up. They're worried about taking it apart. A union is actually one of the easiest looms to move. Uh, they're designed really from the get-go to be easy to transport. Uh, a lot of times, there's just you take off a couple parts, you can snake them through a door. If you have a regular, like a 36-inch wide door, they'll just float right through. You know, they're they're really very easy to move. I keep looking over here because that union is sitting here. I debated about putting that union on here and, and warping that up, but I decided I'm going to use my old loom. I haven't used it for a while, so I'm going to do that. Uh, but uh, I should mention at this time too that you know the the videos I do on the weaving, uh, that's a kind of, of limited interest to people, and YouTube really has no idea how to to handle that sort of thing. You know, it, uh, I, I noticed, I think I made, uh, on the two weaving videos that I did, I think I made seven cents on one in the whole month and eight cents on the other. Because YouTube doesn't really, you know, their computer evidently, their artificial intelligence doesn't know how to put ads on stuff like that you know they they're completely lost so I'm gonna be moving you know whenever I do any of the weaving videos like when I set up the old loom that'll be on the ghost channel uh, so I won't monetize those at all because uh, there's really no point in it. like I say there isn't there isn't that much interest but the people who are are interested in it are very interested in it uh, I noticed in the analytics on that one I happened to look uh, that most of the views on them videos came from Facebook because you now I'm not involved in Facebook at all but there's a lot of little groups on Facebook and one of the groups I'm sure there's more than one is to do with weaving and that's where a lot of people came from Facebook to to see them videos but like I said they I'll leave the ones that are already on here on this channel but from now on, when I do a weaving video, since they really aren't, uh, like I say, ordinarily popular with everybody, I'll move them over, you know, from now on, it'll be on the ghost channel. You know, it's just log, log cabin loom ghost. You know, it's, I normally, I do things on there that I can't monetize. 
you know, they get stuck there. Oh, and another thing, she asked about uh, what type of warp, the carpet warp. Well, no, you can you can buy a lot of different kinds of warp, and uh, some of it is kind of poorly made. Some of it is really expensive. Uh, what I always use is the Maysville brand of warp, and if you look for carpet warp, you're going to find Maysville. And, and that's really, you know, it's the four ply. It's about as good as it gets at a reasonable price. You know, there's a lot of them that use like the Sane cord. Uh, that's popular in like Sweden and stuff. You know, you can do that. Uh, I know I've got a whole pile of the thread that was used to show, sew shoes in the Red Wing Shoe Factory. There was a woman who wove and did use nothing but that, but she worked at Red Wing. So she gave me a whole bunch of spools of that, and sometime I'm gonna warp up the loom with that, that just to try it out. Uh, to me, it, it's a little finer. It's incredibly strong, but it is a little bit finer. But if you look for Maysville warp, you know, it's a good cotton warp. It isn't it isn't going to kill you. It's not real cheap, but I think it's like seven bucks a spool or something now. Though you really have to look around because some people are going to charge you three times that. You know, you got to you got to shop around a little for it. But they've got a good selection of colors, and the colors are they're color fast. They don't fade. So I, I can recommend Maysville. I'm I'm pleased with that. Uh, let's see if I can. I think that's the only ones that was really bugging me that I was trying to get at. Uh, yeah, somebody was asking, I, I evidently on a kayaking video, why use a kayak instead of a canoe? Well, the canoe sits right here, but we're going to take the kayak well, either today or tomorrow or the next day, I think, we're going to go out on the kayaks. The thing about a kayak, they're much more maneuverable, plus easier to get up and down. Like when we took that, my canoe was like a 17 and a half foot, and that thing is just, you know, they're big and clumsy and uh, just not as maneuverable. It kind of takes the fun out of it. You can haul a lot more, but when you're just playing around, a uh, kayak is a lot more fun. You know, uh, I'm sure people think a uh, kayak is a whitewater thing. Well, it really, you know. Kayak is just a good little boat. But I think we're going to take them out. Well, okay, I think that's... I think that's all I have to try to cover here. But the main thing I want to tell her about that loom thing, you know, that union is easy. It's one of the easiest to move. Uh, not hard to thread. They're really a very good basic beginner's loom. Well, I shouldn't say that because, uh, I mean, it, it, you can do a lot with them. The thing is to start off with a basic loom like that and learn all you can on that. And then if you really want to, you can go to a bigger loom. But it's always better, you know, like I know a lot of people who will buy a very expensive loom that's way too complicated they they don't know how to run it or how to set it up so it never gets really used you know they uh that happens quite often even the people who take classes in weaving uh they come home from these classes uh, and they can't get warp on their loom you got to get the basics down first and that's where a union will teach you the basics you know you can always go up from there it's the same but even with the lead loaders it's about as basic as you can get, but you can learn an awful lot from them, and they're just so handy and so portable. But like I say, the crimp eyes, if you're using cast bullets, it's not a problem. But if you're using the jacketed, you do have to be careful. I think that'll cover it. But it was good to get that done. But it was basic, simple construction, except, you know, I nail the boards on extra long, snap a chalk line, cut them up where I want them.
so we end up with a bunch of these little odd pieces but they can be used to block it to level it and in the end there'll be firewood and the logs start out as firewood so I guess that's fitting but like I say the weaving stuff will be moved to the ghost channel from now on I think it just make it uh, simpler I won't have to deal with uh, odd ads. That's what I think I was going to talk about too one time. Uh, I'll maybe go into it later. But YouTube is really horrible about... They have seem to have no ability to really to put an ad on a video that is any way connected to what's being talked about in the video. I, I happen to watch... You know, if I go... Uh, and I go off of my channel and then watch the videos as if I'm just anybody passing through, then I'll see what ads are, you know, I have, but I have to go like to my other channel and then from there watch this channel, you know, and then I can see the ads, otherwise I don't see the ads, and you see these damnable ads that have no bearing on the video at all, you know, like there's one that I saw on a couple of videos of mine where they're advertising some magical underwear that's going to make obese women look thin. Well, in the first place, there isn't very many women watching my channel, so it's a poor choice of channels to be sticking women's magical underwear ads on. But when you you look at a video and you think, well, okay, the logical thing would be to to advertise or to try to get advertising from a certain company whose products I'm actually using. But nope, they don't do that. They, they put on any old thing. Actually, what they're trying to do is get away from that. They really like the idea of people uh, will have a membership to a channel. If you have a membership to a channel, so it's paid, you pay for it, and then there's no ads, but then YouTube gets a cut of that. And they would much sooner have a steady income from that then take the chance on if you if they're trying to survive on ad revenue alone then they're kind of at the whims of the advertisers you know like when all of a sudden we had that adpocalypse kind of thing i think that made them real nervous so they're really pushing the channel membership thing well i'm never going to get involved in that i'm never going to be a member on any channel but that's why uh, you see weird ads, ridiculous. You know, a, a human being would look at them and say, "Okay, this is the product that we should be advertising." Like, say, there lays a Husqvarna chainsaw. Okay, yeah, you should, you should, kind of get Husqvarna to advertise. That would make sense. Nope, I get fancy women's underwear. <laughs>